This is the Independence Palace in Ho Chi Minh City, formerly known as the City of Saigon. In the center of downtown Ho Chi Minh City, aka Saigon, along tree lined streets and near Tao Dan Park, is located Independence Palace. This building was the presidential residence and office of the President of South Vietnam during the Vietnamese War. If you plan to visit Ho Chi Minh City, then watch this video to the end. Info in this video will include directions, ticket prices, times, and of course we'll share our own experiences and tips. Keep watching this video and if you found it helpful, like this video and write a comment. We really want to hear from you so we can keep improving our content. Welcome to HipFig. If you're a travel enthusiast, then join our community by subscribing to this channel. This is the Ho Chi Minh City, also known as Saigon Travel Guide Series. This episode is the Independence Palace, also known as Reunification Hall, in Ho Chi Minh City for visitors to Vietnam. Give us a thumbs up if you like our videos. The Independence Palace, also known as the Reunification Hall, is a historical landmark building in Ho Chi Minh City. It was designed by architect Go Viet Thu and reconstructed in the 1960s. The Independence Palace has an area of 120,000 square meters with four gates. The main gate of Independence Palace is located at 135 Nam Kai Khoi Gia Benton District 1. There are multiple ways to get around Ho Chi Minh City. One of the easiest ways is of course by taking a taxi or by taking the rideshare app Grab. If you're really feeling adventurous you can also take a public bus but that's not really suggested for new visitors to Vietnam. We'll have a new public transport video for Ho Chi Minh City soon, so subscribe to our channel so you won't miss it when it's published. We took a Grab, which is our preferred mode of transportation when in Ho Chi Minh City. Our driver dropped us off in front of the main gate. From the enclosed gate, we could see the water fountain in front of the palace, which is a good spot for pictures. Independence Palace is open weekdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and on weekends and holidays from 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. The ticket booth is located on the left side from the gate in a smaller building if you're facing the front of the palace. We walked along the sidewalk to the building and then followed the brown sign for tickets. When you walk inside the building, the ticket booth will be right in front of you. General admission tickets, which include the, an exhibit in a separate building, and the palace tours are 65,000 Vietnamese dong per adult. If you only want to visit the palace, then it's 40,000 Vietnamese dong per adult, and this was the option we chose. We didn't have enough time to visit the exhibit building located in a separate building along the northeast corner of Nguyen Thi uh, Minh Kai Street. There's also an electric tram tour for an additional fee. Included in the admission price are a guided tour with professional guides or you can take a self-guided audio tour and they have uh, 10 languages English, French, Japanese, Korean, Chinese, German, Spanish, Russian, Thai, and Vietnamese. Once we got our ticket, we went through security and began walking to the palace building. History note. On April 20th, 1975, a North Vietnamese tank crashed through this Independence Palace gates announcing the fall of Saigon. You can see two of the original tanks used in the capture of this palace parked in the grounds. In November of 1975, the Provisional Revolutionary Government renamed the palace Reunification Hall. The water fountain is a central feature within the palace grounds. There were lots of people taking pictures here. Please note, do not step on the grass. The Independence Palace, also known as Reunification Hall, is a five-story building encompassing an area of 4,500 square meters. The total area of the building is over 20,000 square meters, so make sure you wear good walking shoes. We decided to take a self-guided audio tour. Even if you don't want to listen to the audio, the self-guided tour consists of 35 informational panels with historical pictures describing the significance of each room in Vietnamese, English, and in French. Once you get to the top of the ramp and turn around, you get a great street level view of the fountain. We walked up to the ramp into the main building. The basement has tunnels, 
a war room, and telecommunication center. The war room has its original maps on its walls and period telecommunication artifacts on display. This is pretty interesting. The main building has three floors, two mezzanines, one terrace, one ground floor, and basement. Once you go into the building, after you get up to the top of the ramp, you'll be introduced to rooms like the Grand Room for Diplomatic Credential Presentation, and there are several terraces with sweeping views below and across the main uh, downtown corridor of Ho Chi Minh City. If you get a chance, linger a while at the painting Bing No uh, Dai Cao, meaning the Proclamation of Victory, which shows the Vietnamese peaceful life in the 15th century. The grand and clean lines of the architectural style of the palace clearly shows its beauty, like the stone flower curtain in front of the elegant bamboo on the second floor. There are other rooms like the chamber which has a capacity of over 500 people and is used for venue meetings, receptions, and cabinet meetings even today. Each of the rooms we visited were roped off, but uh, you can see most of the artifacts pretty clearly. Along with the many oil paintings, you'll also see pottery. There are dozens of ancient Chinese pottery uh, from the periods Ming and Qing. My favorite feature of the Independence Palace were the many terraces that uh, look out into the fountain and then to the center of Ho Chi Minh City. It's actually quite gorgeous and a great place to take your pictures. In the back of the second level, uh, of the building is the presidential living quarters. You'll find artifacts there like model boats and severed elephant feet. I, would to I was told that they were actually real. On the other floors there's a card playing room, a casino, and more terraces. At the very rooftop terrace there's also a um, heliport. Here's an energy saving tip. We suggest taking the elevator to the top floor and walking down if the wait to go up is not too busy. Please note that the elevator is small and slow. On the ground floor, you can also watch the 30 minute uh, documentary film, The History of the Independence Palace in an air conditioned theater located on the ground floor. Uh, you can watch it in English, French, Japanese, or Chinese. The film is interesting and you can rest your feet and sit down in an air-conditioned area. In addition to the main building, um, at the left corner of the palace grounds, there's an octagonal pavilion that you can visit, which also offers a traditional arched roof and is a great place to uh, relax. After we completed our visit, we were hot, tired, and thirsty, so we stopped at the cafe located at the back of the palace near the tennis courts called the Highlands Coffee to rest our feet and quench our thirst. If you purchase a ticket for the exhibition, it's located in a separate building along the grounds at uh, Win T Min Kai Street along the northwest of the palace grounds. Independence Palace is good for the whole family, but especially for history buffs. Plan on spending at least one hour or more depending on your interests. It's a nice area to walk around and there's lots of restaurants like one of our favorites, Cao Lok Bo uh, Duan Vien, right across the street. We recommend combining your visit with the War Remnants Museum or the Notre Dame Cathedral of Saigon and or the landmark post office in Ho Chi Minh City, which are all within walking distance, or you can take a short taxi ride. Happy travels! Go to hipfig.com for more information or go to our HipFig travel channel on YouTube and be sure to subscribe for regular updates.